Welcome back to Mumta Bridge College Online Study Portal. Well, today these are the digital classes which have been recorded for BSc First Year Physics, and the topic is consists of the unit one for the unit first, and it is for the chapter third, which we are going to discuss in our particular series here. Well, uh, today we will just give you an introduction that what we will be going through within these lectures. So today it is the lecture about the special theory of relativity. Well, uh, this is a well-known lecture. If you are a student of science, then I can assume that if you have studied physics for the class 11 and for 12, and also you've been going through the science subject from the class 6 to the class 10, and the special theory of relativity or the theory of relativity, these all are been discussed in within your subjects. It is saying that for the class 8 and even also for the class 9. So I cannot, I am not sure that if it is being discussed in the class 10 syllabus also. Rather than uh, this is more briefly discussed for you for the class 11 and a single chapter that has been introduced for the class 12 also. I am not so sure about the class 12 but it has been discussed for the class 11. Well, uh, this is Apart from all these things, let's talk about that what is the theory of relativity and why it has been so important that we are talking about it right now. Well, uh, if this topic has been consist in your physics book for the BSc course, then you can say that this topic has some strategic importance. Well, uh, if you know a well-known uh, name here, the name is uh, Mr. Einstein. Well, uh, he is a very great scientist. You remember from the era, he was a French scientist and well known for his work in the physical sciences or in physics you can say. Well, uh, I need to draw this image here. So, let me go for some expressions. Okay. Well, uh, his work for the physical sciences has been appreciated for his work for the special theory of relativity. Well, the special theory of relativity and how this theory is special. This theory is special because this is being talked about the relativity theorem. So, first, let's talk about that what is relativity. You know that in your, stud in your student life, the most hating term in the relatives is uh, no one within the students likes relatives. Why? Because they will come to your home and ask about how much marks that you have got. Well, uh, this is not our topic which we are subjected to talk about. Uh, that's a bit more normally think This is not our topic here. Well, the thing which we are talking about the relativity. Relativity is something. that resembles that resembles with something yes uh, this is like as uh, something something so what is this something means here where does this something will lead us to well it means that the resemblance of one thing to the other and that's why it is called the theory of relativity there. Well, not the relatives, uh, let me clear them off because we know that we need to talk about those things which we are not insist here. Okay. So the relativity is the concept of resemblance. Simply it is a concept of resemblance. The thing resembles to each other. Those are the things which are being said to be the theory of relativity. Okay, these are the things which are related to the theory of relativity. Well, uh, I am not going to discuss about the scientist's role and the another thing which are saying that like as what did the scientist do in, the, in his experiments. Well, you remember this man, uh, this is the man, just because of him, we get to know the real aspect of that. Before Mr. Einstein, there was another scientist 
named as Newton. Well, everyone who is studying physics right now, the man is well known. Who is Newton here? According to Newtonian mechanics, it was said that time is constant. This is all about Newton. Newton was the first person who said that the time is constant. According to him, the time is constant. But in real sense, according to Mr. Einstein, what is the real concept here? Uh, Mr. Einstein said that uh, this is not possible everywhere. But the time is not a universal constant, but time is related. Okay. So it is the uh, main controversy of the era, saying that this is the main controversy of the uh, era like for the 19th century. Uh, in the 19th century, this is the most controversial topic here. One greatest science, one of the greatest scientists, which is the Mr. Newton, who is saying that the time is constant. According to Newton, the time was universal constant. And uh, if he is a great scientist, so no one can debate on that. But one controversy is there. According to Mr. Scientist, time is limited. According to him, when any object is subjected to is subjected to two different reference frames two different reference frames then for them for them time will be different Okay. Well, this is it, and I think this is enough. We need some workspace here. So, I am going to clear some things here, well, which no longer need it by now. Well, I think that we should clear these things off, as we need some more workspace. Okay, so what is the main problem here? The problem is the concept of relativity. No one would like to ask that because many much of scientists who are following Newtonian mechanics they continue to say that the time is constant according to them time is universal constant So the term which involving is saying that the universal constant and the time is universal constant. So it has been said that wherever you are, even you are on earth, that doesn't matter, or you are on moon somewhere, and if you got two more guts for you, then if you are on sun, then time will be same for you. Let's say this is the person here. And according to this person, the time will be same. Okay, let's say the clock here. The clock will always give you the same data. Okay, so wherever the person is, the clock will remain invalid. Yes, the clock will remain invalid. But this is the person here who just said that no, no, wait. He said that no, wait, I got a concept, yes, uh, by now, I got a concept, yes, the concept is, the concept of relativity, yes, the concept that comes into action is the concept of uh, relativity by now, okay, the concept of relativity, so he said that, uh, excuse me, Mr. Newton, I have some doubt for you. You said that time is universal constant, but in my practice, I need to say that in this practice, uh, Mr. Einstein's practice, the time is no longer constant. So he said that uh, time is not a universal constant. Well, we will get to that concept for the next slide. I think this is enough. 
I think that you got the concept here, which we are going to discuss here. We will go to discuss the special data. Thank you. So this is the introduction, main introduction. That how does the theory came into action? So this is only an intro video. That what we are going to discuss about. Let's move to the next slide. Okay. Here we got some workspace, and here what we have here is we have here something that is most common example of theory of relativity. I hope that every one of you remember this example. Even if you are a student, even if you studied science or physics for the ninth class, then you remember this example. This is the example of a moving train. Okay. So for the example of moving train, what was the example of moving train in real practice? Okay, in real practice, the example of moving train was it was said that according to Mr. Einstein, when it was said that uh, time is no longer constant here, it was the man here who said that time is no longer constant according to. He said that no, no, time is no longer constant. He means not like that if you are within a special area, like that if you are in equator, if you are in some kind of zone here. He doesn't mean to say that. Well, uh, we got some liberal concepts that we, uh, I just want to say that the things which I write in this particular box are the wrong aspects of the theory of relativity. Some person says that if you are at pole or at equator, the things will be different for you. Well, uh, this is not uh, proven here, so this is a wrong concept. Do not go through these kinds of bullshit. These are only the fake things here. Also, sometimes they say that uh, if you are like at, uh, if you are a normal person, if you are at states or you are in motion. In every reference frame, these are things which have been said for every reference frame here. It has been said that it will be true for every reference frame. Well, this is not true for every reference frame. You are not going through these kinds of things. Well, these are only something that are to be mistaken. And I think that we will uh, away from all these things. I am not going to discuss these things anymore. These are only bullshit here. These are no longer needed here. We do not need them. Okay. So let me clear them more because. I do not want them to interpret in our calculation. Okay. So let's get back to the example here. This is the example not only for everybody. We do not want to talk about the everybody here. This is only the body which is extremely at rest. The body which is extremely at rest. And another body which is at extreme motion okay so two types of bodies are there one of which is extremely at rest and another which which is in extreme which is at the extreme motion so for these two bodies the things will change this time time will no longer function for these two cases okay so we consider an example if you remember this example the example of moving train in which it has been thought that if some person is standing here, some mirror there, well, I just told you that I am not so good at drawing. Okay, let's say if this person is standing here, and according to him, there are two things, because we are just talking about the general relativity. Okay, we are not going to do the special theory of relativity, but we just want to know about the relativity of relativity. According to this person, these two persons, let's say this is the Mr. Einstein, and another one person who is with Mr. Einstein, standing with Mr. Einstein. These two persons are in motion. Okay, according to this reference frame, let's say I am using the white color here so that you do not get complicated. Okay, so according to this uh, red person which is outside the train, according to him, these two persons, which is the Mr. Einstein and the another person, let's say it is, uh, let's say this is me here. Okay, this is your teacher. Uh, consider that it is you. That you are sitting with Mr. Einstein. This is you here. You just want to know about the physics. Okay? So you are in here and you are with Mr. Einstein, so that you just want to know that uh, what is the relativity concept here? 
What do you really mean here? Well, uh, Mr. Einstein also has some complications about this theory. So we do not go through the real aspects, but he said that the things could be like, like this. Okay. There is only a marks of explanation in it. We just wish to say that these things could be like that. Okay. This need not to be like that. It is only a paradox. Okay. This is something that is uh, like as a paradox or something. Okay. This is a hypothetical concept because the theory of relativity is, uh, has no proof at all, but it is sometimes it resembles to our day to day life and it explains a lot of phenomena, a lot of phenomena that which are related to our the uh, relative motion of planets. And many more things. Okay? This is what it explains. Also, there is the same thing which is been taught in the sense of relativity is according to these two persons which are in this reference, let's say according to you and Mr. Einstein, this person who is standing, you know that this person is at extremely rest. And let's say these two persons are in an extreme motion. Let's say the motion is towards this side, uh, this arrow which is showing the direction of motion here. Okay, let's say these two are moving in this side. According to these two people, this person is seems to be moving this side. But in actual practice, you know that this is the standing person. This standing person has no motion at all. But why does this person appear to be moving? Let's say if any kind of these two trees here, if you can see. And if you want, then let me draw two trees here. Let's say these are the two trees which are some of there, okay, and uh, the train is keeps on going and what happens next? The happens is the person is being gone and the thing only uh, uh, left is if you are moving in these directions, so what you will have? You will see these sort of trees here, somewhat here, and you know that trees are extremely adverse, trees are not moving anywhere and they will not move any kind anywhere, okay. But according to these two persons, according to the reference of these two persons, they can say that they will, they, they will not just only can, but they will say that these trees are moving in this particular direction. But in actual practice, these persons are moving this direction. This is simply, you can call it the relative. This is the relative. And in practice, what is the uh, theory of relativity? That is only a time concept. Okay, so let us know what is the actual time concept. And for that, what we have to do? We just have to move to the next slide. There we have a time example. And also we will talk about the twin paradox. Okay, so uh, let's move to the next slide here. Okay, so what do we have here? Is, sorry. Okay, let's take this image here and let me enlarge it so that you can see the things clearly in your sense. What does this image have? Well, this is only an image, and this is only an imagination, okay? Well, let me tell you what we have here is only an imagination. This is a hypothetical concept here. Okay? We have only these hypotheses. What do we have? Do you remember this formula here? The time is equal to distance upon speed. Okay? So you can say that within this formula, what we can say, uh, let me use this formula here. So what do we have? We can say that if speed is higher, if speed has a higher value, then what will happen? Then time t will be reduced. Time t will decrease. For the highest value of speed, the value of time will become the lowest. And how and why these all things happen here? Why does all that happen? Just because the speed is higher this time. When the speed is increasing, the time will go on 
decreasing. Okay, so this all happens in the actual practice. Also, we got one more concept here. Uh, what if this speed here? What if this will be equals to the speed of light? Let's say this is equals to C. What will happen? This is the thing here. This is all what actually happens. What will be the value of T1 by now? The delta T will be depends on the 2 into D divided by C here. Okay, so the time will depend on two things. One of which is the distance and the another which is speed. Okay, so what will happen? What if we have one more thing here, which is the distance, the concept of distance also is something that we are subject to talk about. If the distance is increases, anything which is travelling for a particular time, the time will also keep on increasing. The thing will happen, this is the actual practice, you can see it here, yourself. Time will increase just because the distance is increasing. If something is here, let's say you are subjected to travel from this particular point A, to another point, let's say the point B here. If you if this distance is constant, let's say this distance is somewhat same as the small d here, but not talking about the small d. Let's say this is okay. What if this distance is capital D here? So you are moving to this distance. Let's say your direction of motion is this, and you are moving with the velocity v. Okay. So the time taken to travel from point A to point B will be equal to the time T will be equal to here, which is said to be the 2D over B. But we have assumed that the velocity must be equal to the velocity of light here. So the value of time T will be equal to 2D over C. And for our reference, we said that this is a part of time so that we said that this is the delta t of here. So what is going to happen in this image? What is happening here? Okay. I have some answers for you. Do not worry. You need not to worry here. We got some answers here. The answers for what is actually happening here. Let's say this distance, this is a light source here. We are just talking about the light here. Okay. So this is the light source. Well, this is the light source here, and uh, here it is a cell, a cell, and cell which is the photo cell. Okay, we are talking about only the photo cell. Well, uh, sorry, I need some one space, so I am filling up some things here. We do not need them any longer here. So I am going to need some space. We need to let me switch to the stroke eraser. Okay. Let me erase there. Well, uh, within this figure, what we are talking about? We are just talking about the concept of light here. Okay, we just want to know that what will happen if light is traveling from one point to another. Well, every time when you talk about this simple particular watch, let's say this is the clock here. Saying this is 12, 6, 3, 9, and the things like that. Within this clock, we cannot prove our theory of relativity. We do not, uh, we do not need this clock anymore. Okay. So we switch to one thing that is called as the atomic clock. Okay. We need atomic clock here. Yes. Okay. So we need the atomic clock and for that atomic clock we got this particular thing here which is the light source from which the light is falling, light is coming through this way and falling on this cell which is a photo cell for our practice and uh, this time the velocity v will be equal to the velocity of light okay the velocity v will be equal to the velocity of light here okay so this is coming this way with a velocity of light which is equal to the c here and this is the whole distance, and the whole distance between this uh, photo cell, this is the photo cell, uh, well, this photo cell to this light source is said to be this 
chapter D here. So when this light comes to this uh, photo cell, let's say the light is coming this way. The light is coming this way and strikes to this photo cell, and then it falls back in the same way. So it will cover a distance which is equal to 2D here. Okay, this is the distance that is being covered by the light. Okay, and the velocity of light is C. So these are the factors on which the time actually depends. So according to Einstein, for the atomic law, what we will have for the atomic law concept, this is the concept of atomic law here. For the atomic law concept, what we have? We got some conclusions. Saying that the theory of relativity, the theory of has some existence so it means that the concept of theory of relativity exists somewhere and these two things which are here are the wormholes these are the wormholes this is also another wormhole we will talk about wormholes in Another video because we are not going to go through this mesh any longer because the wormhole is a different concept uh, which will take another explanation time to talk about. Okay, so this is the concept of speed, uh, the concept of time here. Well, uh, I think that we have done with this particular slide, so let's move to the next slide and uh, talk about the conclusions. Okay, we need to get through the conclusions. So let's move to the final slide. In this slide, We will conclude all what we get from the theory of relativity. Okay? So let's see the what we get from the theory of relativity. Well, the theory of relativity that has proved some things to us saying that time has a variant value. A variant value that will vary from time, that will vary, that depends on that depends on two factors saying as the distance and the speed. Okay, so these are the two things on which the time actually depends. Well, we got one more thing to discuss here. That is the concept of twin paradox. I hope that you remember this concept also because this has been discussed for your reference in these courses. Okay, so let's talk about the what is the twin paradox. According to the twin paradox, it has been said that it is only an assumption by Mr. Einstein and in some more condition it is proved to be true. Yes, uh, this is a true assumption. Uh, it has been proved true here. Uh, only all the, those hypothetical concepts and the things you are uh, subjected to prove really according to them you can say that things may exist, things like that. So let us assume that there are two brothers. This is the first brother, and also we have this second brother. Uh, remember that I am not so good at drawing again. These are the two brothers, and these two brothers are twins. Okay, these two brothers are twins. Means they have everything same. But the most, uh, most common thing what we need to get through is the age. Okay? We will say that their age is same. Okay? We just want to say that their age is same. Okay? So according to Mr. Hansen, let's take that if this first brother remains on earth 
okay and this second brother which is our special brother or uh, which got some extra ordinary talent and he has been selected for some uh, experiment for nasa so what will happen according to einstein if this person is to be seated into a space ship let's say this is the space ship here okay so this is the space ship and this second brother is been appointed to this space ship and this space ship is subjected to move with velocity of light and it is only subjected to revolve around the planets two planets okay okay uh, this is only some drawings here okay this ship is moving from planet to planet this is only something just is subjected to revolve and this uh, ship is gone and this person this second person who is inside this ship okay let's say this is the person here okay this is the second brother here yeah, saying goodbye to his first brother and well, goodbye is not the concept here we do not want to see these things okay the thing happens is okay so the first time the brother is gone and let's say that if he returns after 5 years after 5 years well these 5 years are for the second brother okay we just talking about only the second brother the second brother has spent 5 years into this spaceship the spaceship the condition is the condition which is subjected to know that this spaceship is moving with the velocity of light so after 5 years when they return what they see is according to mr einstein what will happen the first brother is being turned old and the second brother will has no longer changes in age let's say initially these two brothers has an age of 20 and after 5 years this person returns with the age of 25 years and his first brother this is the first brother here and he is the second brother so the first brother will uh, got an age the second brother will have this is the 25 years only but this person will become about the 65 years or more okay he will be more than the 65 years so this is all happens just because of the theory of relativity okay so this is what actually happens with the concept of the theory of relativity Well, this is it for today, and I hope that you learn uh, very much new things from this lecture. So, what I wish to say that only a uh, thank you to all the viewers who are watching this video. Thank you very much, and I hope that you learn something new here within this video. And if you learn something new, then you know that what you are subjected to all the things here. Well, uh, this is the Metaphysics College uh, digital classes. Signing off.